welcome back from another interesting case presentation here you can see an young male presented to us a 37 years old with headache and off and on for 6 months with blurring of vision and loss of balance while walking and swaying while walking he had mild blurring of vision he was investigated outside and you can see here there is a large lesion which is hypo, isoto hypo on t1 and becoming hyper on flare as well as gt images filling the completely anterior third ventricle with resultant hydrocephalus and periventricular lesions and if you see here closely you can make out that the furnace is when lifted up and at the same time i have put up here that it's not just the lesion which you diagnose it as now as colloid cyst but if you see the picture in pictures you will realize that the colloid cyst has got a specific uh, anatomy which is related to the fornix as well as the furrow of Monroe. Here you can see a perfect marking based on the calculation which I have shown on the images. Please slow down the video, watch it on a larger screen and then you will realize that the distance between the midline as well as the distance from the nasion which is calculated and then a barrel is done and now after doing a barrel and you can see in the picture in picture the anatomy and everything here actually the coagulation of the choroid plexus has been done already and when you entered here you can see that there is a large colloid cyst which is entirely blocking the foreign of Monroe. the calculations were so good that when i entered the endoscope just sliding over the head of the caudate nucleus and to the frontal horn will show you that you are directly on the on view of the forearm of magnum forearm of mundo sorry now i am using a catheter especially a cut catheter of infant feeding tube or the tube which has been provided that stores where you can try to suck out the thick material you can see that the material is very thick and with the utmost care and everything even after sucking it was very difficult for me to remove as much as possible now you can see at the 12 o'clock and 1 o'clock position the cyst has slightly giving away and it's making some space see here that i am trying to coagulate this especially the vessels as well as the wall of the colloid cyst by doing that you can see the slowly now the 10 o'clock 11 o'clock and the 12 o'clock position is there the movement is being seen in the colloid cyst and i am trying to coagulate as much as possible with the bipolar the bipolar is a very good instrument especially in the endoscope like this and you, now you can see the sliding of slow sliding of the uh, the electrode and as well as the coagulation now is opening up the forearm of Monroe and you are able to visualize the third radical posteriorly. Now you can see that I have after that coagulation I have just trying to slightly take a punch biopsy of the lesion now you can realize the single or wow, a slightly a drop of blood blurs you, your vision entirely in the endoscope this is the one of the biggest drawback when you are doing an liquid medium endoscope even though nowadays people are doing it with entirely emptying the uh, uh, the ventricles using an air as a medium and then trying to suck it out but still i am comfortable doing in a liquid medium here you can see you have to have patience such that you wait for some time clear the warm RL as much as possible and then one one of the few steps which have been uh, especially not recorded much is here is the coagulation which i have done of the entire wall as much as possible and the patience which you take to uh, slightly deliver the colloid cyst into the lateral ventricle of the patient that is on the right side now you can see that the colloid cyst after the punching of the biopsy has been the small pieces which are there are being tried to even pluck it off now you can make out slowly that the cyst has got such a mucinous material that it is not getting mixed up even with the fluid now with catheter you can see that i am going to suck it out it comes out now it is there now i am going to put the catheter into the hole which i have made into the colloid cyst and then i am going to suck it out
You can make out that this constant small oozes will slightly deter you from punching the cyst as well as the bleeding. So here your patience is the one which is always tested. Now after the waiting for about and clearing of the blood, you, you can see that now I am again entering with a colloid cyst and much of the forearm fornix is unharmed. Realize that he was an, uh, you can say, non-graduate and he was basically a driver. So you have to remember that Contusing the fornix and operating away from the fornix keeps their memory intact. Here you can make out that I have coagulated much of the choroid plexus which was entering into the third ventricle and one of the things which I have done and but not recorded here is the cutting with the small scissors here. Now again I am using the bipolar there trying to coagulate as much as possible. Coagulation continuously and then trying to slightly poke in, inside makes the fluid also to come out as well as the wall to shrink and shrinking and sometimes this coagulation makes the tissue also slightly tougher to hold the gra in the grasper. Now you can make out with the grasper I am giving a slight tug so that it falls into the ventricle but make sure that as much as possible that you can see at the 6 maybe the adhesion of the colloid cyst is at 4, 6 or 8 location on the endoscope and you can see with the tug which you are giving and now with a slight test tug it has slightly come out of the foramen of Munro. Now again there is slightly oozing control it these are the small oozes but don't see now this is a big ooze there which came up so patience always leads to success here in such cases of endoscopy. This is why patients always in such cases. Now, fantastic view you are seeing there that the, the uh, cyst has completely been emptied. Now it is hanging around. Now you can uh, even think of using, if you want, uh, ask your assistant to support the endoscope holder slightly. And then you can even use uh, by hand my manual technique also to hold and cut it, which I usually do sometimes. But now you can see the cyst wall is is being used as a even when you are sucking out you can use it to slowly pull it into the lateral ventricle now that the most of the cyst has uh, been detached from its uh, attachment and i even the the place now where you are seeing this i have even used the scissors to cut there which was not recorded sorry for that and now you can make out i am trying to pull the with the slightest tug to pull the colloid cyst into the ventricle if possible away and yes now you can see the small pieces are being removed sometimes you get a complete wall as a go but at the same time make sure that don't give a tug if it is bleeding until unless you are sure that the attachment has been at least coagulated and cut as much as possible here that's what i told you that i have tried to cut huh, now you can see that the attachment is being coagulated there. I have pulled that tissue and it has been coagulated there. The coagulation is nothing but the attachment of the colloid cyst there to the tila coronary. See that, that, that is the point where I am trying to coagulate such that you can even try to cut it or if you can able to rotate and pluck it off, that is the best point. Now, that point of attachment which has been coagulated, at least you are sure that you are not going to pull in any of the major vessel there. Here you can see the tissue is being held and it is caught. Yeah, yes, it is in the scope now. <laughs> it is in the scope. It is come out, but this is a, sometimes a danger position if you are not able to find out that there is a bleeding behind it. Okay, now once it is, once it is removed, now I am going to completely pull the scope out with the piece. Yeah, you can see that. Yeah, I am pulling with the complete the endoscope with the piece out. I will show it. Yes, that has been put back. Now you can see entirely the tissue is completely gone. There, there, there is no uh, colloid cyst wall or anything tumor there. And now this is the entire, you even visited the 
small you visited the third ventricle now you can see the third ventricular floor also is seen the two mammillary bodies are seen there the two mammillary bodies are seen there these are the two mammillary bodies which are seen and that is the point where you can say that okay third ventricle is completely opened up now i slightly turn my endoscope posteriorly to find the septum of the uh, lateral ventricle on the medial side is not complete it is deficient now sometimes if it is complete i do a septostomy here now that this is a coagulated uh, um, correct plexus there yeah this is septum which is deficient there are small vessels there you can coagulate or you can enter in between them but preferably sometimes i try to coagulate then only i enter small ones you can coagulate with the bipolar or the monopolar and once you enter once you enter with the sheath slightly directing it your endoscope you can see the opposite choroid plexus yeah that is the choroid plexus on the opposite side probably that is the interthalamic adhesions there so this makes you definite that the lateral ventricles both are communicated okay i am coming out and since most of the job is now done that you are taken care of the choroid cyst the third ventricle is seen and you have done a good job come out this is the entrance no bleeding and just do hemostasis do hemostasis and this is just a small hole just 12 mm hole and your entire choroid plexus choroid uh, choroid cyst is out and this is the wall of the choroid cyst which has been excised completely and this is the fluid which has been sucked out when we were trying to de uh, decompress the cyst decompress the cyst this tissue is been sent for hpr and it is confirmed it's a choroid cyst and this is a post op scan bilateral cilindric fissures have opening up there is no choroid cyst except a small bleed in the uh posterior part of the third ventricle no hydrocephalus patient is doing fine and went back home on the third day thank you